I'm gonna be telling you about every single boss in Blast Fruits, as well as some secrets that you must know about them. Okay, the very first boss of the game, the Gorilla King. It's a level 25 boss, he drops absolutely nothing, and he respawns every 3 to 4 minutes. You get a total of 2,000 belly and 7,000 XP for killing the Gorilla King. And since he's the first boss of the game, he's also unfortunately the weakest boss. But then again, everyone needs to start somewhere. Alright, moving on, we got the second boss of the game, and this is Bobby, Buggy the Clown. This is a level 55 boss, and he respawns every 9 to 10 minutes. Once you kill Bobby, you get a reward of 8,000 belly along with 35,000 XP and this boss does have the chop fruit so you won't be able to do any damage to it with swords and he's pretty powerful for a beginner boss especially since you can't use swords all right next up we got the saw boss and this is a level 100 boss and he has a 10% chance of dropping the shark saw but overall, this is a pretty bad sword, so I don't recommend grinding him just to get it. He spawns in every 20 to 45 minutes, so you're gonna have to wait a lot of time if you want to farm this guy. Okay, so the next boss for this game is the Yeti boss. This is a level 110 boss, and he drops the Yeti for item. But he does spawn in every 5 minutes, which is normally expected for beginner bosses. He has a total of 4,600 HP, and once you kill the Yeti, you get a total of 180,000 XP along with 10,000 belly. So that's a pretty decent reward if you're starting off. And the place you find him at is at the snow village, at the top of the ice lake. Next up, we got a kind of secret boss that not a lot of you might know about, and this is the mob leader. And he can be found on a pretty secret island somewhere next to the pirate village, and this is a really small island, so it's really hard to find. The mob leader is a level 120 boss with a total of 2,750 HP, and he does 130 damage per hit. But this boss is the third easiest in the first seed, so it's really good for grinding bounty or honor, because he literally respawns every 60 seconds. Alright, moving on to the Vice Admiral. This is a level 130 boss, and he has a 10% chance of dropping the Vice Admiral's coat. He spawns in every 7 minutes, has a total of 4,250 HP, and does 140 damage per hit. The place he can be found is a Marine Fortress in the main building at the top of the tower. And if you equip the quest for this boss and defeat him, he gives you a total of 15,000 belly along with 350,000 XP. And this is one of the first powerful bosses in the first season. so if you're a beginner, this one's gonna be pretty difficult to fight. All right, moving on, next up we got the Warden, and this boss spawns at the Prison Island. It's a level 220 boss, and it spawns in every 4 to 5 minutes. Once you kill it, it gives you a total of 6,000 belly along with 600,000 XP. And the damage it dishes out is completely unknown, but it is a pretty stacked boss, because it's one of the harder islands of the first sea. But it's nothing compared to the next one. All right, next up we got the Chief Warden, and this is a level 230 boss. It also spawns at the Prison and right next to the previous boss. It drops the Warden's sword with a 5-10% to 10 drop chance. And once you kill, it gives you a total of 10,000 belly along with 1 million XP. He has a total of 9,000 health and dishes out 380 damage per attack, so you gotta be pretty stacked to fight this guy. Next up, we got another boss located at the prison. Literally three bosses in the same place. And this one is the Swan Boss. He's a level 240 boss. He has a 5% chance of dropping the pink coat accessory, and he spawns in every 30 minutes. And this boss has the spider fruit, so he's pretty difficult to fight. Once you kill him, he gives you a total of 15,000 belly along with 1,300,000 XP. He has a total of 11,000 HP and deals a whopping 139 damage per hit. On average, that is, because he has a fruit, and he uses a bunch of different abilities from them. Alright, moving on, this is a boss that a bunch of you might not know about. It's the Saber Expert. It's a level 200 boss and he drops the Saber V1, which is the highest damage out of every sword in the game once you upgrade it to V2. And the way you unlock the ability to fight him is by doing the jungle quest. And overall, this guy is a pretty powerful boss and you need to defeat him if you want to get the sword along with observation hockey. And the place he's located is at the jungle, but you can only access the fight after you've completed the quest. Alright, moving on to the heavy hitters in the first C. We got the Magma Admiral. He's a level 350 boss and he has a 10% chance of dropping the Refined Musket. Obviously, he has the Magma Fruit. And he can only use two abilities of the old Magma Fruit. The Z ability and the X ability. So that's not too much to worry about. He has a total of 14,500 HP and deals 284 damage per hit. So you gotta dodge all of these hits if you wanna survive. Overall, he's a really solid boss and this one's definitely gonna be a challenge for you for a C players. Alright, moving on to the underwater city location. We got the Fishman Lord boss, and this is a level 425 boss, and he has a 10% chance of dropping this really cool trident that literally lets you grapple all over the place. He has a spawn time of 20 minutes, and once you defeat him, you get 15,000 belly along with 4 million XP. 
this trident has two abilities. The first one is trident throw, and this one's the grapple ability I was talking about. And the second one is called water pulse. And this just dishes out a bunch of damage to any enemy next to you. And this boss actually has two forms. You actually have to kill him for a second time because he ends up changing forms. He has a total of 18,000 HP and deals off 472 damage per hit. So a pretty solid boss overall. Alright, moving on to Upper Sky, we got the Whisper boss. This is a level 500 boss and he has a 5% chance of dropping the bazooka. He has a 20 minute spawn time and since he uses a gun, I mean, everyone knows how bad guns are. He has a total of 18,000 HP and he deals a whopping 946 damage per hit on average. Making this guy one of the strongest bosses in the first C. Next boss that's also located on Upper Sky, the Thunder God boss. This is a level 575 and he has a 5% chance of dropping the pole first form. And he has a spawn time of 30 minutes. And this pole is really good, but only if you upgrade it to the second form. The first one's kind of bad. And he also has the Rumble Fruit equipped, so he's pretty difficult to find. But he can only use two abilities from it. And once you defeat this guy, you get a total of 20,000 belly along with 8 million XP. Overall, one of the strongest bosses in the first C, but nothing compared to what's next the cyborg and this is a level 675 boss who has a 1 to 2 percent chance of dropping the cool shades accessory it takes 30 to 35 minutes to be spawned in once you kill him he gives you a whopping amount of 10 million xp along with 20,000 belly the cyborg has a total of three different abilities that you can use the rocket barrage where he shoots a bunch of rockets that deal decent damage then we got the strong right where his right arm extends and tries to punch you then we got rising attack where he literally just farts on you and to fight this boss i just recommend ranged attacks because they work really well on him. He has a total of 30,000 HP and he deals around 700 damage per hit, making him pretty deadly. And surprise, surprise, that was not the last boss of the first C. And some of you might have forgotten this, but there's actually another one, the Ice Admiral. This is a level 700 boss and the place you fight him is on the Winter Island. And you can literally only fight him once and that's when you're doing the quest to get to the second C. He uses the Ice Food and he has a total of 27,500 HP. And he's a really powerful boss, literally the strongest in the first C. All right, moving on to the second C. The first boss we got here is the Diamond Boss. This is a level 750 boss, and he has a chance of dropping the Long Sword, a pretty mid sword if you ask me though. He has a 15 minute spawn time, and he's located at the top of the Flower Hill. He has a total of 30,000 HP, and the damage he does is completely unknown. And his quest gives you a total of 25,000 belly, along with 11,500,000 XP. Pretty good if you ask me. Alright, the next boss on the second C is the Jeremy boss, and this guy has a 5% chance of dropping you the black spiky code. He spawns at the top of a hill at the far right side of the first island. And he does have the spring food equipped it, so he's a bit tricky to fight. And he has a total of 35,000 HP. The damage he does is unknown, but he's a pretty mid boss for the second C, so you should be able to defeat him easily. Alright, moving on. Next boss is Fujita, and this is a level 925 boss, and he has the power of the gravity food. He's located at the green zone, and he spawns in every 15 minutes. And if you kill him, he drops a meteorite, and he has a 10% chance of dropping the gravity cane. And he has a total of 40,000 HP and deals around 1,000 damage per attack. And he's a pretty deadly boss to fight, but the rewards are definitely worth it. Next up, we got the Dawn Swan boss, and this is the upgraded version of the Swan boss from the first C. He's a level 1000 boss. He spawns at Dawn Swan's mansion every 30 minutes. He has a 5% chance of dropping you the Swan glasses when you kill him, and a 100% drop chance of the Swan ship. And this one has a total of 55,000 HP, and it's the quest you do to get into the third one. Alright, next up we got the Smoke Admiral, and this is a level 1150 boss that's located at the hot and cold air. He has a 15% chance of dropping the Jitte Sword, and he has a total of 60,000 HP. Damage he does is completely unknown, but he does use the Smoke Food, hence why he's called the Smoke Admiral, a pretty solid boss for the second C. Alright, moving on we got the Awakened Ice Admiral, and this guy's literally just a better version of the Ice Admiral from before. He's a level 1400 boss, he's located at the Ice Castle, and he spawns in every 20 minutes. He has a total of 75,000 health and, and the damage he does is completely unknown. He has a 2.5 chance of dropping you the hidden key which lets you open the chest to get the Rengoku sword. And he also has a 15% chance of dropping the library key and this one you can use to unlock death step. Overall a really solid boss but the one next is a lot stronger. 
All right, next up is the Tidekeeper boss. And this is a level 1,475 boss who has the power to spawn in Sea Beast. He's located at the Forgotten Island and spawns it every 30 to 45 minutes. He has a 7.5% chance of dropping you the Dragon Trident and he can drop you the Water Key with a 40% chance. And some of you might be wondering, what is the Water Key for? Well, it's to unlock the best grinding fighting style in the whole game, Sharkman Karate. Overall, he's a really powerful boss and the strongest in the second C. All right, moving on to the third C. The first boss here is called Stone, and he's a level 1,550 boss. He has a 10% chance of dropping you the pilot helmet, and he spawns in every 20 minutes on the first island. He has a total of 100,000 HP and does 482 damage per hit. You get 60 million XP for killing him along with 25,000 bellies. Pretty good if you ask me. But then again, it is the third C. Alright, next up we got the Island Empress. And this is a level 1,675 boss and has a 10% chance of dropping the Serpent Bow. She spawns in every 25 minutes, has a total of 120,000 HP and does 9,000 damage per hit. Talk about crazy, alright. And she also gives you 30,000 belly and 70 million XP when you kill her. So it's pretty worth it if you ask me. Alright, moving on, we got the Kilo Admiral, and this one is level 1750 and has a 5 to 10% chance of dropping the Lay accessory, which is a pretty decent accessory if you ask me. Spawns in every 30 minutes, has a total of 135,000 health, and deals a whopping 1,100 damage per hit. And you get 78 million XP for killing her, along with 35,000 belly. She spawns inside the massive tree that's located at the third sea. Alright, next up, we got the Captain Elephant boss, and this guy's located on the floating turtle. He's a level 1875 boss and he drops you the twin hooks once you kill him. He spawns in every 30 minutes and if you kill him you get a total of 90 million XP along with 40,000 belly. But he's pretty difficult to kill and definitely one of the tougher bosses in the third sea. And next up we got the beautiful pirate and this one's also located at the floating turtle. It's a level 1950 boss and has a chance of dropping the cavender sword. Once you kill him you get 50,000 belly along with 100 million XP and that is amazing. Overall this guy is also a pretty difficult boss but nothing compared to the next one. Next up we got the longma boss and this is a level 2000 boss. And once you defeat him, you're gonna receive the Celestial Swordsman title, along with the Tushida Sword. And guess what? This boss is also located at the Floating Turtle, man. The Floating Turtle has so many bosses on it. And overall, this guy would be the strongest boss in the third C, if not for what's next. Alright, next up, we got the boss that you've all been waiting for, the Cake Queen, the level 2175 boss who spawns in every 30 minutes and drops the buddy sword. The K Queen is the most powerful boss in block foods to this day, but I'm sure box food stems will add some new ones in that are way stronger than this one. She has a whopping 261,000 health points and the damage she does is unknown, but I will guarantee you that it is a butt ton. She's located at the huge peanut in Ice Cream Land. And overall, a pretty solid boss. She's literally the strongest in the game.